Yet another creature from the Pripet River that looks like a fish, but has really big teeth and an uncommon skull shape. At first glance it looks like a sci-fi monster. Scientists failed to classify the unknown specimen. So they supposed that the fish had mutated in such an ugly way after an exposure to a huge dose of radiation. Who wants some sushi, am I right? Come on. I would... I would not eat that. Not for a million dollars. But I would say I would to, you know, get some laughs from time to time. My word, that is a hideous creature. It's almost like they took, like, like a, like a saber-toothed tiger or like a wolf way back before we started domesticating dogs and just shoved its skull into a fish body and then left it there. That is hideous. That's totally gnarly. That is one of the freakiest things I've seen in a while. <laughs> the area of the power station has been circulating online since a while ago. We see an animal looking like a deer or a moose cross Ooh. the road and hide in the bushes. The weirdest thing is, it's got no head. But maybe it's just an optical illusion. It's either got a little eensy beansy head or it's like, maybe its head is like turned all the way to one side so the camera's only catching that one facade and that's it. I don't know. It seems to be running pretty confidently. It seems to be heading towards those woods with a mission in mind. It's not just a chicken running around with its head cut off. Not that it's a chicken, but you know, it's a turn of phrase. That's wild. Sarcophagus, which was made from 14 million cubic feet of concrete and just over 8,000 tons of metal. Soviet workers known as liquidators assembled the original sarcophagus over the course of 206 days, in shifts lasting five to seven minutes each, because any time longer than that spent near the reactors might just have killed them where they stood. But it's not like the shorter shifts were safe though. Thousands are suspected to have died during the work, with many others being resigned to long, painful, cancer-ridden deaths much later on. The original sarcophagus was built in a hurry and structurally unsound, but it was the only thing keeping incredibly lethal amounts of radiation from being released into the environment. Holy smokes. That is some, some high-risk work right there. That's terrifying. I guess like that's like, kind of like you have to go in as the, the sacrifice. You kind of understand that your job is to protect everything outside of that, uh, that gigantic concrete structure. And uh, you may or may not, I mean, let's be real, that may not probably isn't even factored in there. Be putting your life on the line. My goodness, liquidators, eh? Is that like because the, <laughs> they, they get liquidated by the radiation? Hello everybody and welcome back to Top 10 Central Dark, your place for all things horror. I'm your host Keegan Hughes and today we're taking a look at the top 10 scary moments caught on camera in Chernobyl. I still haven't seen the, uh, the HBO series, I should probably watch that at some time. But uh, you know, all in due time, let me know if you've seen it, if any of these uh, line up with the events of the program. Nuclear power is incredible in more than one way. It's incredibly useful and efficient. Well, I don't know if efficient, but it gets us a lot of power. But it's also <laughs> ooh, incredibly dangerous if uh, something goes wrong like it did in Chernobyl. Hopefully we've learned from our mistakes. Let's get going. It almost feels fitting that Pripyat is full of old broken dolls, so many that there almost seems to be some kind of weird spin-off of The Conjuring being shot there. Wherever you go in Pripyat, it seems like creepy dolls are there to stare at you. They sit on windowsills, they're propped up on skeletal bed frames, they're sprawled out in piles of debris. Some of them are even wearing gas masks to add that extra layer of uncanny horror. While it's certainly tempting to think that everything you see in Pripyat is still pretty much in the same spot where it was left on the day of the evacuation, the truth is that Tourists looking for an awesomely creepy keepsake rearranged most of them for the sake of taking spooky photos. Yeah, dolls, eh? Is that little girl on the balcony a doll? Is that just like a, like a, like a, like a life-size doll? I want to know about that. I'd like to uh, hear the explanation behind that one. Uh, otherwise, like all these baby dolls, like do you think people brought their own baby dolls and put them down? Or do you think that there are that many baby dolls just scattered around? <laughs> After the meltdown, I guess like all the children in town probably had dolls. It was they're probably a big big uh, big 
time, you know? It's, it wasn't, it wasn't, it, it didn't happen in modern days where everybody, uh, you know, had their, uh, their, everyone in Russia had their own Transformer and their own, uh, you know, He-Man and their own Thundercat. Smaller villages just plain weren't interested in leaving, radiation or no radiation. Many of these older residents were set in their ways, having previously lived through the threats presented by and they weren't about to run away from a danger they couldn't even see. So I should leave now because of something I cannot see at all. No. About 1,200 people, known as self-settlers, moved back into the exclusion zone in the months and years following the disaster. Some returned to their homes within a few years, while others only waited a few months. The government objected to the people's presence, but in the face of that kind of determination, what could they really do to stop them? Yep, I mean, it happens, folks. I'm just gonna go back anyways. If they're gonna live their lives there, they're gonna live their lives there. It's it's the same no matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what kind of danger or disease or you know in, uh, r residual <laughs> nuclear radiation. Uh, they're just gonna go and do what they want to do. You can't tell them to stop. Who are you to tell them to stop? They're just gonna do it anyway. Even if you make all the rules in the world and try to physically restrain them, they're gonna find a way to go and get it done either way. It's just the way people are. Spray paint. On a number of occasions in the years since Chernobyl's meltdown, graffiti artists have snuck into the exclusion zone to make their marks, leaving eerily beautiful works of art on the abandoned buildings behind them. Some of the most striking graffiti work can be found in Pripyat, where artists painted creepy silhouettes of the town's missing residents. The effect is pretty striking. It's probably not an accident that the silhouettes are eerily similar to the permanent shadows that were left on the walls of Hiroshima after America attacked the city with a nuclear bomb during World War II. That's wild. That's, I mean, who who is more dedicated to their craft than graffiti artists, right? Than freaking tigers and spray painters and whatever other words you want to use to describe people who use aerosolized paint to create works of art on walls. Who is more determined? These folks are going back into the exclusion zone to fire some beautiful and creepy art on the walls. ...building a fairground and carnival that was due to open a mere two days after the disaster happened. The creaking, rusted, radioactive oh, no. Ferris wheel yeah. never took a single paying customer, yet still it stands, quietly, creaking in the wind. It's almost as if the amusement park was a part of some grand plan to create the most sinister-looking ruins anywhere in the world. What could better symbolize the tragedy of an abandoned town where thousands of children once lived and played than a disintegrating Ferris wheel, a set of bumper cars overgrown with vines and the skeleton of a merry-go-round? That's such a classic image, eh? The, just the abandoned fairgrounds. I wonder like how influential that image was on many people like making horror movies in the years past that. Horror movies, horror games, anything. That kind of abandoned fairground vibe, especially with, you know, the invisible threat of radiation. That is something else entirely that's above and beyond with creepiness. Like, just imagine standing in the middle of it at night and like you th you think it should be like dead silent and then all of a sudden you hear like some calliope music. Oh boy. This party leaders have been stored backstage in the community theater along with old props and equipment. Seats are torn and decades old dust sits heavy on the stage. They look sternly resilient as the town crumbles all around them and walls plastered with disintegrating murals designed to helpfully remind the long since vanished population how awesome it is to live under Soviet rule. Like the Soviet Empire itself, everything in Pripyat has fallen apart. And what remains is just a ghostly shadow of something that lives only in the history books. Classic, very classic. I don't know if this is like, we're talking about the murals, we're talking about the, the propaganda itself. I mean, you're definitely gonna find all that there. I just wonder what, uh, you know, the next big ruin will look like and what we'll find there, you know? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it, you know, explicitly, but uh, it, it, it seems like, uh, you know, uh, there, there are some places that are also on fast tracks to becoming abandoned and full of things that you can only find in history books. And uh, it might not be nuclear, but it'll definitely be some other power source that uh, over uh, overtaxes the environment. Noble, visiting an old school is a particularly haunting activity. While you won't stumble upon anything that will make headlines, like a rampaging mutant or a ghost, the overall sense of unease is utterly palpable. Nurseries are littered with dolls that were abandoned in the middle of being played with, 
left to lay there, limply, their dead eyes staring into the abyss. Toys are scattered all over the schools, getting a sense of what the children were up to, just as they were gripped by fear and terror, is both haunting and heartbreaking. Oh my, yeah, that would be awful to go and sift through all the all the educational materials, all the toys, all the little baby-sized gas masks. Oh boy. And we talked about dolls already a little earlier, but this just kind of brings it all together, right? The fact that these schools at one point were uh, full of children learning, getting ready to go, and then uh, they had to evacuate ASAP. Were rescued, a lot of animals were left behind. Many died as a result of radiation, mm. but many had a fate far worse than death. Many were mutated beyond all recognition. In particular, it was farm animals who were left to find themselves exposed to extraordinary levels of radiation. According to Thought Co., there was a spike in malformed animals just after the disaster and again in 1989 and 1990. That's the incredible, horrible name chosen for the uber-creepy concrete tomb that crews built around the failed reactor in the mad hope that it would stop leaking radiation or producing deformed farm animals, cattle, goats, horses and pigs all found themselves mutated. Yeah, that's, it's like, like it, it, it goes down like generations and generations. Like you're gonna be seeing stuff like that from the fallout for a very long time. And that's just like, it's tragic. It's sad. It's, uh, it, it seems like a, just a terrible waste, right? Like just all these things that we, people had set up for years and they're ready to go, live their lives, work with their animals. And then all of it just kinda, oof, just cooked, ruined, mutated. Goodness gracious. And that is all the time we have for today, folks. Hopefully you uh, found this as interesting and, you know, haunting as I did. Just a very, very terrible thing that happened. My goodness. Uh, let me know what you're thinking. Uh, make sure you stick around for some bloopers because I'm always tripping over myself and saying questionable things. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Rock and roll. All right, top 10 scary moments caught on camera in Chernobyl. Or do you think there actually are that many baby dolls? Oh no. Let's try that one again. I don't know. Do you think any of the dolls get up at night and walk around? You know, propelled forward by the uh, immense power of nuclear fallout? Oh boy. Takes me back to the good old, the good old stalker days. Sorry, I had to yawn there real quick. I feel like every time I yawn, I look like a lunatic. Hmm. This one's lagging. Hold on. I'm gonna yawn too.